friends, it's Dave. Today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that's been on my mind a lot on and off for the past year or two, and that is whether I should look into investing in real estate as opposed to just the stock markets. So uh, I started looking into this a uh, few days ago. Well, I've looked into it on and off, obviously, for the past couple of years. But for the purposes of this video, I started looking into it a few days ago. Uh, really looked up all these statistics, had these massive spreadsheets looking at housing price history for the past 50 years and S&P and all this data. And I really started just going down this rabbit hole of just a ton of data and information, way too much for a single video. So what I've decided to do is kind of back it up and really just take a extremely simplified approach to uh, give us a little high level overview of why you might want to buy one asset class versus the other. Spoiler alert, if you're not planning to stay to the end of the video, uh, as with a lot of things, this really just comes down to personal preference and what type of investment works better for you uh, as an investor. So first off, I just wanted to start off with uh, what do I really look for in an investment? Well, first of all, I want it to be liquid, which means I want to be able to buy or sell it whenever I want uh, with very little work very quickly. And I have to give this point to the stocks. Uh, you can buy a stock basically any weekday between 9.30 and 4.30 and sell it just as easily at the drop of a hat. I can even do it from my phone, log into my laptop. It takes 10 seconds, super quick and super painless. Now, on the other hand, it can take months of searching to buy a investment property. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to assume I'm talking about a rental house. So uh, as I go through the video, if I'm talking about a property, let's assume it's not your primary residence, it's your secondary uh, property that you are renting out. So uh, yeah, you have to deal with finding a place, uh, agents, selling, it can really take months. It's a, it's a whole process to sell your house. So uh, definitely in terms of liquidity, it's a big point in favor of the stocks versus the real estate. Uh, next thing is I would like something that I don't have to spend a lot of time managing and this one also goes to the stock. So once I own it, I just have it sit in my account. It will go up and down. I can follow it and keep researching it if I want to. If it's maybe say an S&P 500 ETF, I really don't have to. I can just uh, let it ride the markets and uh, it'll do its thing and you can just uh, pretty much ignore it. You can do some things to manage your stocks like for example setting up a drip which is a dividend reinvestment plan so all the dividends that come in from this fund or company will got will get automatically reinvested in stock of the company that's one thing that i have done in the past uh, you can also worry a little bit about tax implications when you're looking at selling but other than that really there's not much to it in terms of managing your investment for the stock market now, when it comes to uh, real estate, you have a lot of things to deal with. You have uh, finding tenants, screening tenants, vacancy t rates. Uh, you're not always going to have a tenant when someone moves out. There might be a gap when trying to find a new one. Make sure they're a good fit. If they have issues, uh, it could be a big pain for you. Uh, it's extremely difficult to evict tenants where I live. Uh, rules are really in favor of the tenant, so even if they're not paying if they're doing damage to your property evicting can be extremely difficult and a lot of work a lot of forms if you uh for instance want to raise the rent you're probably going to have to submit another form to your tenant and just uh, a lot of management work dealing with this uh real estate investment you've also got to follow up on rent if you know someone doesn't pay their rent or they're behind uh, could have issues with the neighbors um, in the neighborhood. There's all sorts of factors at play, and uh, management can be a significant amount of effort to deal with. So uh, that's point two in favor of stocks. Now for number three is transaction costs. How much is it costing me to purchase this investment? Uh, and as well, if I want to sell the investment, 
how much is that going to cost me? And this point once again goes to the stock market. Uh, it's never been easier or cheaper to buy and sell stocks. A lot of apps and brokerages now offer free trades for certain companies or certain ETFs. Now, uh, even if they're not free trades, you're looking at probably a few bucks in order to buy a significant quantity of shares. It's extremely cheap. And the same again when you go to sell it, very cheap in order to sell your investment. When it comes to a house, you're going to have to deal with a real estate agent unless you are one yourself. And that will likely cost you several thousand dollars taken out of the closing price of the house. Uh, there will be a seller agent as well. There will be a lawyer dealing with the closing of the transaction. And who knows, there could be a lot of other little fees, people taking a cut in there. So it's actually fairly expensive in terms of your transaction costs. And once again, same thing when you go to sell it, you're going to have to deal with all these expenses. Um, next up is maintenance. Uh, so what do you have to do to maintain your investment? And again, not much for stocks. You really just have it sit in your account and uh, go up in value. Uh, not a lot of you have to do in order to maintain it. Pretty much nothing really. When it comes to your house, um, it could be a lot, right? So you can either pay people to maintain your property for you or do it yourself and that'll be a lot of work or a lot of money. Um, you could have to replace your roof at a certain point. You could have to replace your furnace, appliances, do any repairs. Uh, all sorts of things go wrong with houses and need to be fixed all the time. So you have to uh, bear that in mind and put in the time and money in order to maintain this valuable asset of yours. Um, lots of upkeep. Now, if you do own a condo instead of a house, you can pay maintenance fees and not have to deal with a lot of this, but there will still be some things inside your condo you'll probably have to deal with yourself, and those maintenance fees can be pretty pricey and just continually go up. And also, it's completely out of your control what, uh, what the money is spent on that you're paying your maintenance fees out. So if you own a house, you can decide, oh, I think we should replace the roof this year. If you're in a condo, really the condo board is going to decide what your money is going to. So once again, that's a fourth point in favor of our stock investments, and we have zero to real estate. So you might be thinking now that I'm uh, extremely against real estate investing, that I much prefer stocks. And uh, while that is true in the past, I'm really not counting out real estate investing here because there's one final point that is massively in favor of the real estate. And this is actually a really big deal that a lot of people don't think enough of or are even scared of. And that point is leverage. So uh, for a real estate transaction, you're looking at, for simplicity's sake, we'll say around 20% down payment. So that means you're getting basically like 500% leverage, right? So if you put 100000 down for a house, you get a $500,000 house. That's 5x in terms of leverage. If you have a stock portfolio, you can be offered margin by your broker. You're probably looking at 50%. So if you have 100000 in margin, 100000 in investments, you're looking at $50,000 in margin, which is much less, a, a order of magnitude less, in fact. And um, this also comes with additional risks because if your stock portfolio fluctuates and goes down and you've used all that margin, suddenly your broker may force you to liquidate your positions, which you certainly don't want to do at that time. So uh, a lot more risky to use margin in the stock portfolio and leverage up than it is for taking advantage of that leverage on your property. And as well, uh, it generally comes fairly cheap when it comes to mortgages because they're secured against the value of the property, which uh, is generally a little bit more stable. So um, if your home value goes down, you're not looking at having to sell your house. As long as you make your monthly mortgage payments, you'll be fine, even if you're briefly underwater in terms of the value of the home. So that's a, a big factor in terms of uh, benefit for the house. So let's try to dive into whether this one major factor for real estate 
makes up for these other four factors that are uh, in favor of stock investing. All right, so now I'd like to take you through a simple example of how this huge amount of leverage can possibly work to your advantage and even overcome the advantages in returns that the stock markets may provide. So um, we're going to keep it very simple here, uh, not get into too many details, but doing some initial research, it looks like uh, a 29-year average in the real estate market has been about a 3.9% return annually. Whereas if you just look at the S&P 500 index, which I know is different than say a broad market or including uh, foreign markets, but let's just go with the S&P 500 for simplicity. The average annualized return on that has been 9.87%. So you can see already the S&P return is almost tripling the real estate return, which would make you think that the stock market is better. But let's uh, take a look at how this leverage is going to work. So if you invest $100,000 in the S&P 500, compounding at 9.87% annually, that calculation comes out to $657,000 and change in about 20 years, which is, uh, you know, a pretty nice return. It's definitely something that can help you out with your retirement and uh, definitely a solid return. Now, um, if we look at a house instead, we take that same $100,000 investment, of course, uh, you have to subtract real estate agent commissions, uh, lawyer fees, all sorts of fees around the sale, and uh, you look at the down payment size of 20%. So the actual total value of the house you're buying with your $100,000, at least currently, is actually $432,000. So uh, significantly more, obviously, than, than what your down payment is. Now, if we compound this $432,000 at 3.9% annually instead of just your initial investment because you're really getting returns on the value of the entire house, not just your down payment, then your value you're looking at in 20 years is nine hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars five hundred bucks so uh it's actually considerably outperforming the stock portfolio by about three hundred thousand which is not too shabby over 20 years um, but there's more to look at. You have to look at your cash flow. So uh, in a house situation, you're looking at a rental income on average. The numbers I found were about 8.9%. This can vary massively depending on the region, the type of property. But let's take a 8.9% value of the house is what you make on average per year in rent. But then you have to subtract vacancy rates because you always have tenants come and go. So no property is full 100% of the time. Maybe you're full 95% of the time or something like that is kind of a good estimate to expect. You also have to subtract obviously what you're paying in your mortgage payments every month. You know, then you subtract your home insurance, uh, all your maintenance costs. A lot of people like to put away a little bit every month for maintenance costs. So when those big ticket items do come around needing replacement, they'll have a uh, savings in place for that. And then of course, property taxes and any other little things you may need to spend on your house. So uh, let's call this about 0.8% of what you're making on rent, at least initially. Now, the first few years you buy a house are usually the most difficult to uh, make the cash flow work. Sometimes you may even dip into the negative territory where your costs are higher than you're making back in rent. And uh, this will generally flip the other way pretty soon as rents continue to go up, your mortgage cost stays the same or goes lower. So um, for this example, 0.8% of that $432,000, the initial value of the house, we're looking at you're making $3,456 just in cash flow in the first year in this example your mileage may vary. I know I've looked in my area and I find it very difficult to find a property, at least a condo type thing, where the the cash flow works and your cash flow positive right off the bat. When I've looked into this, um, unless I go further afield, it seems like I would have to be negative uh, for the first couple years before I could perhaps turn a profit, which is one of the reasons I haven't pulled the trigger on this. But anyway, um, 
The S&P 500 average dividend rate is 1.92%. This is averaging over the past 30 years or so. Uh, if you multiply 100,000 by that 1.92%, you get $1,920 per year. So your cash flow is actually looking better on the house as well, even though, again, on a percentage basis, uh, your returns are much better in the stocks, your interest is much better in the stocks, but um, just because you're getting those returns on the full value of the house, it's really multiplying the money and multiplying your future returns it's actually outperforming the stocks in this scenario so as i said previously you're kind of paying for this outperformance by having to deal with screening tenants dealing with tenants issues uh, finding new tenants, maintaining your house, looking for a house, dealing with all the transaction issues around the house. Um, there's a ton of issues that come around when you're looking at buying property. So you're kind of paying for the leverage with that extra time, effort, and money. And each person needs to decide whether that's a right fit for them or they prefer the more perhaps laid back approach with the S&P 500. Of course, this can also change if you're investing in an individual stock that you think is significantly going to outperform the index. That can really change the math. So if you're not an indexed investor, these things can definitely vary. But you have to be extremely confident and do a lot of research to expect to outperform. And in fact, most people don't outperform. So um, if you're not really looking at this at an almost full-time basis, going with the indexes can be a smart move. Another factor you need to consider is that as you scale up and buy multiple properties, it can be a lot more difficult to manage. So if you the first property uh, may be worth it to you because you're getting that leverage, you're turning your first $100,000 into a $430,000 investment and you're growing your money on that, so that may be worth it, but each property you add is going to be more and more work. So you may get to the point where it's practically a full-time job just managing your various properties. I think um, an interesting strategy is maybe investing to save up to buy your first property, then maybe you can buy one and then look at the stock market. Uh, it really varies depending on the person. So yeah, if you found this channel because you're a stock market investor, I mean, I definitely am too. I do think it's worth looking into real estate, potentially considering it for that massive leverage it can provide, relatively safe leverage. I have dabbled in some margin trades, but that's uh, really high risk and that doesn't give you nearly the amount of leverage that your mortgage can. Uh, as you add more properties, you might have to put down more money and that sort of thing. And I haven't really gotten into tax issues and I'm not really going to do that. I'm just going to keep this video as simple as possible. So let me know, have you invested in an income property? How has that worked out for you? Has it performed better than your stock portfolio? It can certainly be a lot less volatile but it can still be stressful dealing with tenants and house issues and problems. So they each come with their own stresses and issues. Thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you next time. See ya.